Now stay with me on this one. This one is actually quite amazing. First, let us look at this graphic off to my right. What is amazing about this particular graphic is as follows. All right, I highlighted and kind of embellished the charts just a little bit to make it easier to understand. So look at that green zone. That's highlighted, I should say highlighted green zone. What we are looking at is basically the effect of the administration. Now, albeit excessive, normally considered excessive, 30 milligrams a kilogram of body weight in this animal model of vitamin K2. In particular, menaquinone, menaquinone, menaquinone. All right, the reason being is this. Look at that highlighted green area. Now, the control group here, they actually have kind of like two different control groups. One is you have aged mice, three months plus 17. One group of these aged mice was given that 30 milligrams slash per kilogram of that particular form of vitamin K2, otherwise known as MK7. Now, look at the results. Look at the performance in this T-maze test. You have these older mice, significantly older mice, performing just as well in the T-maze test as the three-month-old adult mice. And that is just the beginning of how amazing this research truly is because the results are not just in one particular test, but multitudes of tests. Let's look at the next one. I think the next one is cerebral cortex and hippocampus. Yeah, hippocampal role of gene expression, frontal cortex, sorry, frontal cortex and hippocampal gene expression. Look again, now that you know exactly how to read the chart, the three month old adult mice and the mice treated with 30 milligrams a kilogram vitamin K2 menaquinone for I think once a day for five days per week for 17 months. Look at basically the development. The same. 17 months later, no appreciable age in basically the frontal uh, cortex or basically hippocampal gene expression. That is just astounding. And then look at it again. Let's say broaden the, the spectrum of the test in reference to this animal model. Repeated over and over and over again. Now keep in mind, there's many different forms of K. People normally associate K with coagulation, which is normally uh, associated with a form of K1. Then with K2, I think there's MK2 to MK14, so you have about 13 different types of a vitamin K2. So the particular one we're looking for is menaquinone, which is MK-7. So the results are in this particular form of vitamin K. Look at the results down the board. Multitude of dimensional uh, benefits to the outcome of the consumption of, in this particular atom model, 30 milligrams a kilogram of MK7 five days a week for 17 months. The performance is almost exactly the same as the young adult animals in this particular model. And the reason, more of a reason this is so important is this. Outside a huge swath of the population taking medications that inhibit K. And again, consult your medical professional. A lot of individuals may be taking medications uh, that may be counterindicated in reference to vitamin K itself. But still, just the same. The outcome in our society right now is currently this. About half of older adults are now passing away with the dementia diagnosis, and it's not getting any better. So if something so simple as a simple nutrient, in this case, MK-7, uh, menaquinone, can yield benefits in basically either uh, mitigating the effects of aging in particular aspects of the brain or yielding better outcomes as far as mental acuity and so on and so forth, then so be it. But keep in mind as well, this is an animal study. It has to translate into human. And again, 30 milligrams a kilogram is way a lot, but still just the same, the outcome is there. 
And it looks like according to at least the study itself, the outcome of the livelihood of these animals, per se, uh, was quite positive. And that's amazing. So basically, it's, it's incredible actually. So we look at the neural development, and I really encourage you to look at the full study yourself. But now let's get right into the public release, and then we'll go we'll brush through a little bit of the full study just to basically spark your interest, but let us begin. All right, as follows. Vitamin K shows evidence of brain benefits, at least in rodents. Studies suggest a biological pathway through which vitamin K may help ward off dementia. And that is an understatement. Vitamin K2 demonstrated a very promising impact in hindering age-related behavioral, functional, biochemical, and histopathological changes in the senile aging brain, quoting the researcher. The studies uh, showed that vitamin K2 can be proposed to be a promising approach to attenuate age-related disorders and preserve cognitive functions in aging individuals. And when you talk about half of adults passing away with a dementia diagnosis, at least here in the United States, you talk about a curve that needs to be flattened, that is one that needs to be addressed soon, if not immediately, to proceed. The new study elucidates some of the biological pathways through which vitamin K appears to help preserve cognitive functioning. The researchers investigated the effects of minicunone, 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 however you want to pronounce it, MK7, a form of vitamin K2, in three-month-old rats, an age in which rats have reached maturity. One group of rats received a supplemental MK7 for 17 months, while the other group did not. I know it's a little confusing sometimes, so they had one group, they compared their cognitive function to three-month-old rats. The other group did not get any vitamin K and aged along with the other group, which did receive the vitamin K supplementation for these five days a week, 30 milligrams a kilogram, for 17 months. The researchers used validated tests, including a maze swim test, sociability test to assess the rat's cognitive functioning and depressive like and anxiety behavior. These tests revealed that rats that received MK7 performed better than those that did not. Vitamin K supplementation was associated with reduced evidence of cognitive impairment, depression, and anxiety. Well, because also too, you'll get more into this as well before I continue on with the rest of the sentence, it helped with neuroinflammation. And inflammation often has been associated, especially neuroinflammation, with depression and anxiety. So anything that tends to help with the inflammatory process of the brain, you never think of vitamin K2, uh, menacunone, of actually being something that could possibly, I don't want to say elevate mood or make people feel better, but how about help mitigate the effects of what may make them feel anxious or worse? Better way of putting it. Along with improved spatial memory and learning ability. Now, let's look at the dosaging and study parameters. Well, we're going into the full study. There you are, 30 milligrams a kilogram, one daily, five days per week for 17 months. Now, the conclusion in the full study, which I'll have the DOI there for you to follow through, I'll really set it a lot better than I think the public release did. Public release, you know, written for the general public. Vitamin K2 improved functional performance, reduced social anxiety, depressive-like behavior, and enhanced memory performance with concomitant, concomitant, same time, preservative in hippocampal and cerebral cortex tyrosine hydroxylase expression. Biochemically, bio, vitamin K2 administration restored, restored oxidative, antioxidative homeostasis in the brain. Vitamin K2 modulated the inflammatory signaling, which we talked about ahead of time, as evidenced by suppression in the brain of blah, 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 and blah, 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 expression. Concomitant, concomitant, here it is again. Histopathological examination revealed consistent hippocampal and cerebral cortex improvement. Remember the first, uh, one of the first charts I showed you, the, the dual one there, which showed it had the exact same, basically, uh, impact as, or I should say, dynamics as the three-month-olds compared to the three-month plus 17-year-old during the studies. Thus, it can be inferred that vitamin K2 can slow down age-related changes in the brain associated with modulation of an RLP3 
cap cast phase and NRO2 signaling. You get the picture. So there you have it. I want to just, just before I go to show you the full study, let's look basically at that one particular study I showed you right in the beginning of the TMAZE test. That is amazing. Now let me show you the other one in reference to the frontal cortex and hippocampal gene expression. Look at that. Again, now that you know exactly what you're comparing it to, that is just incredible, if not astounding on its own. And take into account, basically, as I would say more than anything else, even this word played way too out, uh, the pandemic of dementia, not just here in the United States, but globally, we really have to look at what may be in interfering with either K2 uptake, uh, bacterial production in the gut, and or lack of dietary intake of this particular nutrient because it has that much of an incredible impact on basically at least mitigating the effects of age-related disorders in the brain and reduction in neuroinflammation. What an incredible benefit. So simple, so dynamic, that that could be for huge swaths of the humankind. Again, gratitude to the researchers. I believe this was published in Experimental Biology. This is, again, the abstract linking to the full study itself. Uh, but seriously, that is just incredible research. And you hear me say that often, and it's true. Gratitude to the researchers. I am humbled that you watch. I hope this information comes of some use. Keep in mind, the dosaging used in the animal study may not translate to human study, and obviously it looks kind of excessive. At 30 milligrams a kilogram, just the same. Fascinating. Again, thank you, gratitude. And I'll catch you all next time. And I mean, again, and I'm serious. I am humbled that you watch. See you then. Bye.